Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. Um, I have just a couple of announcements. First of all, tonight is the first of our February advanced study classes at 9 p.m. Um, both tonight, February 4th, and on February 25th, I'm going to be doing two-hour workshops on whole, rethinking the science of nutrition. And um, I'm going to provide slides and materials and, and things like that to support the things we'll talk about. It's live and interactive, but we'll record it in case you can't be on the calls. And it's a two-part series. In other words, I'm not going to do the same thing on the 4th and the 25th. It'll be different um, sections of the book that we'll be talking about, but uh, all based on that book. And then uh, next week, Conversations with Chef Dell is scheduled for February 10th, and he's going to talk about amazing beans. Not just beans, but amazing beans and great recipes for how to prepare them. He's such a phenomenal chef. You can always learn something new from him. So if you're interested in any of that, contact our office. All right, so today I'm to talk about measles and the MMR vaccine. It's kind of a lengthy topic, but concerns about vaccines are increasing instead of decreasing. And one of the reasons I think is that there is so much pressure from doctors and health authorities for vaccination. And I think it's making people feel a little bit concerned, just the amount of pressure that's being brought to bear. People who decline vaccination are marginalized. They're labeled as uneducated, subversive cave dwellers. And any occurrence of infectious disease is based on this tiny percentage of people who use their right, exercise their right to refuse vaccination for themselves and their children based on either a philosophical or religious exemption. And the coercion has worked. I mean, according to the Centers for Disease Control, less than 1% of school children are not vaccinated and over 90% of kids have received the MMR shot by the time they reach three years old. By mid-September of last year, 2013, 159 cases of measles were reported in the United States and the CDC blamed this epidemic. That's actually what they called it, by the way on 92 unvaccinated people who developed the measles. These people, which included some Orthodox Jews and some Christians affiliated with a, a church in Texas, were described as, quote, clusters of people with like-minded beliefs leading them to forego vaccines. There were no reported deaths from the measles, but uh, the vaccine industry has nonetheless taken credit for virtually eliminating the incidence of and death from measles um, and blames any incidents on unvaccinated people. Now, the big question is why is there so much concern over 159 cases of measles? And I think I can explain this, but I need to go back and uh, pick up a little history first. According to an excellent and well-referenced article authored by Barbara Lowe Fisher, the founder of the National Vaccine Information Center, the goal of eliminating measles, while it might appear well-intentioned, actually has some underlying uh, motivations. Fisher started her group, by the way, after her son was injured by vaccines, and both her and her organization provide some of the best and most comprehensive and independent or, uh, information about vaccines, most of it free of charge to the public. So the first important issue to understand is that the um, not all measles infections are accurately diagnosed and they were consistently not reported to federal authorities prior to the introduction of the vaccine. So therefore, a lot of evaluations and conclusions have been reached without accurate data. According to Fisher, the CDC acknowledges that measles were underreported prior to the time the vaccines were approved in 1963. The CD estimates that because almost all children got the measles, the incidence was about three and a half million a year, but some experts say it was closer to five million because again, you can look at the population of children back in those times and most kids got the measles. The data show that um, in 1960, just three years before the vaccine was introduced, there were about 442,000 reported cases of measles and 380 deaths. 17 years later, um, after the introduction of the vaccine, 13,500 cases and 11 deaths were reported. But in 1990, the number of cases went up to 28,000 and there were 64 deaths. By this time, 95% of all kids had received the vaccine. So in response, the CDC added another um, MMR, MMR shot to the schedule. 
And as a result of that, and by the way, that's very consistent behavior for the CDC. If people get sick or develop these infectious diseases in spite of the vaccines, then we just need to give them more shots. So it accomplished the objective. By 2005, there were 66 cases of measles reported. The number increased to 362 cases in 2008 and 2011 with no deaths. So again, with all of this, why is the CDC focused on these 159 cases of measles with no deaths? deaths that happened last year. Well, the reason is that health authorities have big plans for expanding the campaign to eradicate measles. The World Health Organization is working with governments and drug companies with the goal of eliminating all cases of measles worldwide by the year 2020. In order to do this, 95% or more of the world's 2 billion children must be willing to get the vaccine, two doses of the MMR vaccine. Merck charges the CDC $20 a dose, physicians pay 56, so you could do some quick math and figure out that there's a lot of money in this for Merck. And there's also a lot of work for government workers to do all over the world who like to expand their number and the responsibilities that they have. Government likes to grow itself, so it's very important that people be compliant and get their vaccines. Now, Fisher's main concern in it, I share this concern, is how far public health officials might be willing to go in order to make sure that people, by gosh, get these vaccines and to coerce them into doing what health authorities think is right for them to do. That's a problem I have with government is when government starts to know much better than I do what's right for me or for my family. Recent events are a little bit frightening and they don't bode well for the future. And it goes back to this. Congress passed legislation after September 11, 2001, granting police powers to government health officials. And these include the ability to detain, quarantine, and force vaccinate members of the public anytime health officials declare a public health emergency. And there's a lot of latitude in what constitutes that. These overinflated concerns about 159 cases of measles, well, the CDC makes it sound like a public health emergency. And it's a bit frightening in view of these expanded powers. So according to Fisher, and I think she's right about this, the discussion is no longer really about public health, but rather values and beliefs. And I really don't want the government saying what my values and beliefs ought to be, or anybody else's for that matter. The government's continual um, criticism and marginalization of those who choose not to vaccinate is, um, is kind of frightening. It's government overreach and already frightening episodes have happened as a result. And I'll give you one example. In 2007, parents who refused to vaccinate their children for hepatitis B and chicken pox were threatened with fines and jail. Ultimately, they were herded into a Maryland courthouse by government officials where armed police with dogs supervised their children getting vaccines. If this type of enforcement activity can happen in Maryland, it can happen anywhere, and all you need to do is declare a public health emergency and you've got permission. Meanwhile, the government and most health professionals refuse to acknowledge that there are any risks, justifiable risks associated with these vaccines, and the feds have given the companies, the drug companies, complete immunity from any type of liability. The reality is today it's almost impossible to predict who will and will not have an adverse reaction to vaccines or be injured. It's estimated that there are now over 2 million vaccine injured children. And since the drug companies aren't liable, the families of these children have to seek remedy from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the U.S. Court of Federal Claims. The court, by 2010, had paid out $2 billion in claims to victims of vaccines. And while most claims that are submitted are denied, this is an astounding amount of money to pay for a problem that the CDC and other health authorities insist does not exist. There are good reasons why some people choose not to vaccinate their children and get vaccines themselves, and they should retain the right under these circumstances to make that choice. So issues like this should be a rallying cry for Americans to hold public officials accountable for protecting our rights, and I think we should be looking at this insane obsession with 159 cases of measles as um, being a little frightening in terms of what health authorities may choose to do. If that's, a, if that's an epidemic and that's a justification for forced vaccination or anything else these people might dream up, we should be justifiably a little worthy, uh, worried about it. So um, hold your public officials accountable. Keep track of this stuff. I read this stuff not only because I'm interested in health, because I'm a citizen of the United States and I do not like this type of government overreach and everybody should be interested in this kind of thing. So anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully I've gotten my point across. Please feel free to pass this on to anybody else who you think might enjoy 
watching it, and I'm sure some angry people will watch it. <laughs> I always anticipate the hate mail that comes after I put out something like this, but that's okay. I'm willing to take it because people need to know about it. That's all for now. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.